friends, we want to uh, talk about the uh, employment, but we are not looking at all aspects of employment. We are actually trying to uh, look at how uh, our young persons, or no, not just young persons, Nigerians can make themselves employable. Uh, you might not have all the skills, but what are the basic things that you think that uh, somebody should have before even going to look for a job? First and foremost, what they will actually require is qualification. You would like to know what you studied and your GPA, what you came out with from school. They would like to know how many years experience you've had because definitely they will always want to know your experience, whether you have experience in the field or not. That's the major thing they look at for. The experience is what they need before they not think of maybe employing you or not. After going through several tests, which the firm may actually conduct. But when it comes to the legal profession, which I belong to, first and foremost, after being called to the Nigerian bar, before you get a job, it's not quite easy because definitely they want to get the experience. They want to know how many years you've had the experience. Then finally, when they employ you, you will not be working for them. Finally, when they employ you, you'll be working for them without salary. They won't pay you at that point. You'll be working for them without salary, you'll be going to court, observing court processes. From there on, maybe if you have any case, you bring to the law firm. The firm may then actually give you some money from the case in which you handled. But for them to pay you from the firm, they don't. They just want you to have the experience. When they rely in Nigeria and in the world, I think the people at top positions and the people that are, are making it are those that have their own businesses in the sense that waiting for employment I think it's, it's a serious disaster, let me use that word. Why? Because so many, so many graduates and no jobs, like every year, Nigeria uh, releases so many graduates and there's no job for them to uh, at least manage and the rest of them. So I think we should, most of us, especially the young ones, should take our eyes off maybe government, waiting for government to give us jobs and create our own jobs for ourselves. I think, and that has to do with, number one, I think passion will help. Why? Because if you, if you, if you think of creating a job out of passion, I think it will help you well or better. Why? Because creating the job actually has to do with patience. Like the first thing in creating the job, patience. You have to wait to get your own customers uh, before people start patronizing your company or whatever. Start coming to hire you and the rest. Because they have to, first of all, see what you can offer before they come to you. And that takes a lot of time. Like I have my own brand, my own fashion brand. And I'm just telling you out of experience. A few persons have, have, have actually identified with us. Why? They are trying to know if what we are doing is just for fun or for like a, a, a job or, or something we are doing out of passion. So in Nigeria presently, I, I, I just advise, even if we can still expect employment, I think we should also have our own businesses created, at least to give us a fallback to us in, in case of anything happens. Although our government are unable to provide or set the mechanisms for job creation to happen, or job uh, availability to be there, there is, uh, there is a challenge for those who want to create businesses. If you look at the businesses that most people can create on their own from scratch when they just leave school, it's limited to either entertainment or maybe say fashion or uh, computer related projects. There are some of the other kind of businesses that the person who has to create those businesses, like she said, would need to first of all have some level of experiences up there. For example, in the oil and gas industry, you, it's hard for a, a graduate just coming out of school, right, to just step into those level of engineering and start a firm of his own. He needs to be working somewhere and that. And the trouble now for that person is not gaining that access to work there where we'll have enough knowledge that will enable him to create businesses and then employ other people. So there must be the avenue, right? That employment has to exist. Even when people can create their own businesses, there must be that fact that people coming out of school can find jobs, gain necessary experience, grow, 
then they come up with their own creative ideas of how to expand whatever they are doing and then they can move on to create other businesses that can employ other people you understand that's that's what i'm talking about so the government is not totally out of this they need to set the the the, the uh, economy and the state of the nation you know in a way that would boost job creation so that uh, private company owners corporate owners can have their businesses can survive Right? When their businesses survive, they employ people. And the people that they have employed will gain more experience, grow to the level where they can start their own businesses, and they now employ people. And you see that we have this increase in job creation. Right? And almost everybody, what I think is happening in Nigeria is that a lot of people are now lining up for political uh, recognitions and appointments. It's like politics is the next, is the only or next big business after oil and gas in Nigeria. We have the trending sections of business in Nigeria. From my own uh, perspective, entertainment, right? Entertainment is there. That's the comedy, music. It's booming. A lot of young persons are rushing into that. And then you have the oil and gas, which is what we have. We have uh, uh, oil and gas deposits. So, we, I mean, we have this enrichment in our soil. So, that is there. And politics. As for media, I want to just tie media alongside with entertainment, right? Because it's all the same thing, and politics. But if the government looks beyond politics, because I don't think politics should really be considered as necessarily job creation, because you give a young man uh, a few bucks to go and post in your support on social media, I don't think that's what the core of employment should be. If there is power, if there are good roads, if there are uh, control taxes, not multiple taxes, taxes that are the people, the, a, a growing firm can handle. You understand? If there is security, because you wouldn't want to buy certain things to start your business only to discover that it's been stolen or it's lost. Right? So there is there are roads, cuts down your time loss when you're on transit. There is power, cuts down your excess use of self-generated power in terms of your generators and all that. And the, the tariff, the electric tariff is not too much. At the end of the month, the business that is not making up to 30k profit will be receiving electric bills of over 50,000 to 80,000 from PHED, you know, for no reason whatsoever. And the person has people, staff he has to pay. And then you look at security also, you know, like we, talk, like we mentioned. And with all of these things available, you know, uh, people will be able to get businesses started, manufacture, get loans, access to loans and all that, and then they can then create their businesses. If all these things are not in place, so we can't totally take the government, government away from this because they need to set these things in place. It's the same thing, sir, because legally it's actually the same thing. Everything is just about who know who in the society. That's just how it has been. If you have your connection, you're there. If you don't have your connection, there's nothing for you. So if, you, if you're not connected to somebody, you probably wouldn't be employed. Right, and then uh, some persons want to employ their family members and friends. So they, they, don't, they don't say you didn't give a uh, family member a job, and so the actual persons who are qualified for the job sometimes don't get the jobs, and then the job get messed up because the unqualified persons are probably used, you know. Uh, but what would they, what should a young person do to? Uh, you have talked about experience. The person has experience; is going to, to get the job done. He needs a bit of handy experiences and all that. Uh, what else could be there? Your certificates are there, your qualifications are there, and your experiences are there. Is there anything else that somebody might need? For example, you're going to look for a job somewhere to at least increase your chances of getting a job? Like in the, I always use the legal profession, that's where I belong to. Like in the legal profession, they will always check out for people that came out with first class in the law school. Because it's not easy so to not be just called... So not just any qualification. No, it's not just any qualification. It's not easy to be called to the Nigerian bar. When you come out with first class, they'll be like, ah, this one, there's fire. So it's let's just... Like this is a hard like, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> so let's just get this one. Let's just get this one. So most of it's not about the qualification. but about the grade you got? Because it's not easy to come out with first class. Because in law school, there's nothing like my, my, uh, my practice. There's nothing like um, man no man. There's nothing like that. It's what you write, you get. That's in law school for you. What you write, you get. If you pass, you pass. There's nothing like anybody is failing you from so, anywhere. So you should, you should be aiming for a higher, not yes. just a qualification, but get a qualification that is... Uh, that that's is higher, the, sir. Uh, that's, that's among qualifications, be qualified. Yes. <laughs> that's uh, in, in terms of that. But there are other little things, too, that can help boost somebody's uh, employability, too. Communication. 
how you talk. Maybe you're going to look for a job and somebody is trying to listen to you how you talk. You know about that? That's to me, in the legal profession, I don't think so. No, it's not point, about it, communication. No, in the legal profession, it's not about, but it's if not you guys talk, you guys talk also. It's not about so communication is, because yeah. in the legal profession, where you go, first of all, they want to see your qualification, then they want to know how many years you've been. How, you, how many years you've been at the bar? That's very important to them. Like the chambers where I did my externship, they don't employ people at all. <laughs> they are telling you after your externship, don't bother coming, they don't employ at all. That's just their own policy. So that's how it is with the legal profession. They have certain rules. Uh, but they, okay, we should have had some other persons like uh, people in, uh, in, in attainment and uh, we could have had other people there. But we have a few persons we'll later on when we talk about because the next week, We'll be, we'll be looking at business masterclass. We're having a business masterclass and we need to look at all angles of business. We want to look at the legal section. We want to look at uh, fashion, which is where you are, for example. We have to look at entertainment. Uh, Kel, uh, Kelvin is here. We, at that time, too, we'll be, we'll be helping to get some counsel for those who are actually running their own businesses in, in the masterclass to talk about uh, how you can boost those individual businesses. And there are some other things in which we will talk about, too, the issues of copyright, the issues of patents, for those young men that are making things, we'll have a couple of persons that will be coming around for March. It's going to be very busy for us in terms of this, and a couple of those things will also be maybe put out live so that our friends that are watching live too will participate in terms of uh, adding their own views while we are discussing. Uh, we want people to be able to be employable, but you said in your side it's strict because there's strict policies. But some, but some of that companies too, they, don't, they look at the, the individual who is coming, they look at how you talk. Right, they look at how you present yourself, they look at how you, uh, how you dress, you know, how you come in. You, you, they, they, they also do, for example, you, have to, you're bidding, you want to be bidding for uh, job positions like uh, HRO or public relations officer, for example. A public relations officer should be able to have a flair, charisma, or uh, you know, communication skills that you know naturally might be that he has even if you have all those qualifications if he can't talk to people um outside the communication and the rest i think like i said before passion why because so many persons are, are, are so many people have good jobs but there's no passion they wake up in the morning and they are like ah this kind of place again there's no zeal there's no drive to go to the office so i've seen so many persons walking because they didn't get the the exact job they wanted passion liking what where they are working uh, but in this country right now some persons don't even care whether they like where they are working they just want to, they just want to have a job so that they don't go to steal yeah. they might not be excited they want to get up in the morning and go and walk but having passion you know like working doing what you like yeah. has its own boost in terms of energizing you because if you're happy you, you you love it like some photographers when they take pictures, they have to look at the photos and they really love their photos. You see them posting it and they're, you know, because they're doing what they like, you know. Uh, but some persons have learned certain set of jobs and they need to be employed. They have families to feed. They don't have that choice of liking or not liking their jobs. <laughs> if they have to like their jobs, that means they probably will lose the job they are currently doing and then they have to go back home and be hungry. So they don't necessarily like their jobs. But passion is a good thing when you want to create your own business, you want to define and design your own business per se. It's a good thing. Because if you like it, your driving force for it is going to be uh, there. You won't be lazy about it. You like to push it out because it's like it's you. Hmm? Yes. So uh, there, are, there are a lot of other things that are there. Uh, writing skills. Yeah, writing skills. Writing skills is something else. For example, you know, most people who are going to look for a job, your first major impression to the firm is your application letter. Before they, sometimes before they get to talk to you, it's your letter. So if your writing ability is poor, you lose it from that point because some of your letters will just be discarded. Probably, you fight. You might not even have the uh, the opportunity of defending what it is that you wrote. If you didn't even write, if we're not clear, you were not detailed. I went to the bank to withdraw money, and the copper met me. The youth copper, a lady met me, and she was using the book to communicate. She was like, <laughs> I should ever fill this form, fill this, and fill that. 
And I was surprised when she told me she graduated with a 2 1. And she, and she, she can't even feel the form to withdraw money. So, that as what am I trying to say? In Nigeria, actually, to, to be employable is something that. <laughs> That's a lot, of, a lot of the graduates are not employable in that case. But when you talk yeah. about this, then, when we talk about employment, then you should just be on graduating with the qualifications that you mentioned. I know you are very defensive of your law. And the qualifications. So, you are very defensive so, so of person your, will be employed. Yeah, but with the qualifications, sure. that person, but the person won't be able to do it too much. Yeah. You will sit behind the desk looking for workers that will be filling forms for her and uh, doing a bit of the errands and she will just be giving them back smiles and maybe a pat in the back, a little rub on the cheek. To keep getting it going and she'll be getting her monthly pay and surprisingly too there's a firm there are firms she might land in she will even get promoted in that firm because of personal relationship with some top guys in the firm and those who are really doing the job will sit there in, with meager salaries and not even smelling a promotion for a couple of years and there are many graduates that are coming out in the present school nigerian school that are not employable because number one they don't even know what they study they can't even defend what they study they can't even present themselves that they can't even they are not they are not sure the, the absence of certainty in terms of when you are talking to somebody who is looking for a job and the person is not even sure if he can deliver on the job not knowing what to do is a different thing being be, being teachable that you can be taught more is a different ball game entirely some persons don't even know if they will deliver on the job they just want to have somewhere working so that they won't be lazy yes. uh, like some persons they'll tell you that the reason they are not stealing is because they have no job so it's not just because they want to work they want to do something that will make them not steal. Mm. You know, you know it's, these, are, these are different mindsets. There are people who don't have a job or can't steal because stealing is not an option. Mm. There are those who are wanting a job so they can't steal. So it means if they don't have a job, they will steal. Mm. So inside of them is the ability to steal. So when they now get the job, they go into the job and steal. Because they already have that stealing option available to them. And so if the business provides a stealing option, you now hear them say, my salary has not been increased for so 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 yeah. My salary is too low. That's why I had to go and steal because I'm having more financial burden than my salary can meet. Like I said to certain persons, if you're having your expenses out, outweighs your income, then revisit your expenses, we examine them and bring your expenses down. Uh, a friend said you also you look out for other jobs, right, that can boost your, your income to match up with your with your expenses. But if your expenses like spend about you should be spending about 75% of what you earn and having about 25 or you're about saved out. Not a hundred percent of what you make is not meant for you to spend. You have your taxes. I said, and believe I also you have your offerings and your gift to the church, whether you call it tithe or whatever name you prefer to use. And you also have family and friends that you need to support and all that. And you have to put all these expenses into perspective, but they shouldn't exceed 75% of what you are making. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, they shouldn't exceed 75% of what you're making. And uh, some persons will just get themselves overloaded with responsibilities. And that's when they go into the office, the salary can meet it, and they now reactivate the stealing option and they get to steal. So, so many graduates are not employable. And we're talking about writing skills. Some of them can't even write. And so, if you fail from the point of your application, then you remain unemployed. You, you wonder why you submit job applications and nobody's calling you. Because originally, what you put in on paper tells them that you don't know what you're... You, you understand? You don't know what you're doing or you have absolutely no idea of what you are applying for. So, there are a bit of these skills that are the front button, that are the things that show up first. And then when they now call you for the interview, right, and you carry all those uh, qualifications in your big brown envelope, but how you sound how you talk. You know, there's a, I was somewhere, we had this graduate who sent in an, a CV. And the CV was very promising. The CV was promising enough that I was invited from Potakot to Lagos for his interview. So we had to sit. There was somebody, an engineer, wants to work in SPDC, that was also to ask some questions. I was there, I was called in also, and then the owner of the firm. The, it, it didn't take it didn't take about 10 15 minutes you know when the when the engineer from SPDC shot the guy off he couldn't even defend what he had on his CVs how many years have you been working in this place you say you've worked um, 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 can you do this and that if I'm given the opportunity I will try 
You know, the answers were not definite. It's just like somebody who just took certain things that he knows will be catchy and threw it into his CV just to have an access. You know, okay, this qualification, what is the qualification, that, 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 that. The qualification itself that he put in the CVs and the rest, he couldn't even defend, he couldn't explain them. He couldn't explain them. And the person who wanted this interview was so excited that at last he has found somebody. But, okay, just check him out if he can deliver on this. So we were there to check the guy out. We didn't even have the opportunity of really testing the guys because, first of all, he wasn't even sure. You know when they're referencing something on your CV and you don't know what you put in the CV? It's like somebody else compiled the CV for you and you're sending. And somebody wrote your CV for you and you couldn't, you have not even bothered yourself sitting, uh, bothered sitting down to study your CV to read it. <laughs> so that in case questions are asked you from your CV, you won't be um, 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 and trying to wonder which part of your CV really says that. And it's your CV, for goodness sake. It's your, it's your, it's your resume, right? So you should be aware of every detail of it from, the top, from top to the bottom, from the very first line to the last line of it. So it was actually really a waste of time, and it was very disappointing you know, to the person who was running the interview, because you knew, okay, he's just going to be the big boss. Oh, I've seen what I want, and then he just employs. But like, wait a minute, no, let me get this guy tested. Let some persons ask. So the part that concerned me now, or I was supposed to ask, I didn't even have the opportunity to ask him any question because first of all, he had already failed the first guy, the critical, the critical point, which was actually his, is actually those job experiences that he included that I was supposed to be asking him questions about to know the depth of the experience. But the qualifications had already failed him. He couldn't even defend them. He couldn't even explain them. So there was no point going any further with him. So so many persons have these flashy, fanciful, fleshy uh, CVs that they can't even defend. So when, they, when you have passed the phase of writing, right, then comes how you should talk. And that was even on phone. That was on phone. And you, you, if you're not even confident on phone, you can imagine how it would have been if he was asked to come, you know, come into the office and... <laughs> so some persons will see companies and then they will just send in uh, application letters and that and they can express themselves when they are asked okay we want to give you this opportunity uh, what can you say about yourself in relationship to what you applied to can you deliver on it what are your experiences what do you know about it and they are lost and it happens a lot of times then we come to the issue of experience because if they now put you in without on probation for example probation how are you going to what experience do you have so even while you're looking for a job, you're supposed to at least be feeding yourself with information. There are videos online, yeah. there are lessons, there are things in which you can try out on your own. There are companies you can go and uh, attach yourself with for, just the, for the sake of just having experiences. Right? That's possible also, legally. I'm sure we're still on the legal ground. Okay, when it comes to legally, the experience we have is during the court attachment because during the law school, for because the law school program is one year, so during that period, we all will be sent to different chambers and different courts to maybe stay for like three months in the chambers. So with that time, you should be able to have experience because like where I did my court attachment, the judge... It's amazing. It's always asking questions, firing us with questions. And when you get to court, you see court processes and the rest. So with that, you'll be having the experience. You know that, oh. Yeah. So when you go and somewhere else, you... are supposed to observe court to decor room. All those kind of things. With that, you'll be gaining the experience. Then when you get to chambers, you know that, ah, you have to be in chambers by seven, even before the boss. The boss comes to stay. So how will you even be there by seven? <laughs> so it's just so amazing with the experience. At least by then, you have experience too. Imagine you getting your own um, chambers now. At least you'll be able to coach people as well. So that's just the experience we all need. There must be experience. <laughs> there must be a, there must be experience. And then uh, lastly, lastly, on that making yourself employable uh, has to do with also character. Yes. Because it's one thing for you to be employed is another thing for you to retain that employment. Yes. Because yeah, if you uh, it's another thing for you to retain that employment. If you go into the firm and behave awkwardly, sometimes you could just be arrogant at the gate, not knowing that the man you're talking to at the gate yes. is the boss. Uh, you could be in the firm employed and your attitude in terms of like lateness and you start giving excuses from the very onset of the job, you lose it. I'm coming from, oh, the boss was, oh, the vehicle was that. You know, you need to kill your excuses and look for how to deliver and rather than trying to have yourself excused every time 
cut down on how often you use the word sorry within the firm. You can't always be saying sorry because the word is very easy. Five liter word, you can throw it around on your boss and co-workers and all that. So every error, every error cannot be fixed with a sorry. Because some can literally cost people their lives. Right? And can cost your family huge money. So sorry is not enough. Oh, I, my apologies, I'm sorry. And then you go to try to fix it. Your behavior in, as a whole can help you retain that. And even when the uh, company is being liquidated or maybe say uh, companies are folding up, there's a way that your behavior pattern could be that very same boss can, re can re refer you, become your reference, your referee, rather, to other companies, other firms, and say, I know this person in terms of who he is and how he is. And, and that reference alone, you know, can boost your, your employability, make it possible for people to employ you because of who is, is referencing you. You know, all of that has to do with how you put yourself, your, pack, your packaging of yourself. So you have to think of yourself as a brand and uh, what kind of uh, advertising are you putting out there in the public space about you? You don't know, no advertiser wants to sell a product, goes outside and uh, present the product as false, fake, ineffective and all that. You give it that color, make people like the brand, yeah. like the product. That's what you should do when you're working in the firm because you speak at your brand. Not just with that firm like you, the clients that are also working in that firm, some of them are observing you, how you respond to them, how you talk to them. You know, because you're big, highly paid in the firm doesn't mean you should talk to your clients randomly. Because if you lose that job, su surprisingly, it could be one of those clients that could be giving you the next job, job offer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray for those that are out there seeking for job. We ask that you order their steps to the right places in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that this week will favor them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for we know out of this meeting they shall bring forth testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Most gracious Father, we commit those seeking jobs unto your measure of grace. As they step, they shall be favored in the mighty name of Jesus. Favor shall locate them in Jesus' name. As these words of counsel are taken to heart, we pray that the very persons who take them to heart and apply them will be given access to better places to work in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Stuart Godwin Johnson and you've just had a session with Mind Workshop. We have these chat sections coming up every Saturday and we want you to be a part of it. We want to have different ideas from you. And so if you're watching this video, you can as well give us your comments and then we'll follow up on that. You can have our app from Android uh, on your Android devices from Google Play Store, download it. It's called Mind Workshop. Mind Workshop, get from the Google Play Store and uh, have some very good experience. We see you next time and don't forget to share your testimonies with us. Amen. Amen.